I do like to call myself a financial feminist. A financial feminist uh, is someone who takes care of herself financially, invests for herself, asks for that raise for herself, advocates for herself, because she knows that puts her in a position of strength where she can then go out and change the world. There are lots of ways women can change the world. One way we can do it for ourselves is to invest. Women don't invest as much as men do, and that can cost women hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars over the course of their lives. Um, it's a real life changer and a real drag, and as opposed to asking for the raise, where you get yourself all ready and you go in and sometimes the boss says no, and in fact, with the gender pay gap not closing, the boss often says no. This is something you can control yourself. You can't control the market, but you can control the decision to invest steadily over time. Not investing costs women so much money because they're keeping their money in cash. So women, on average, keep 71% of their money in cash, which earns about nothing. And equities have earned historically since the 1920s about 9.5% annually in a diversified investment portfolio can earn about 6%, call it annually. Those amounts of money compounded from your 20s, from your 30s, add up to big amounts of money over the course of your life. Well, it's important for all women who have paid off their credit card debt, who have saved an emergency fund, who are probably investing in the 401k at work if they're working, taking advantage of a match, it's important for them to begin to invest some amount of money. For some women, that can be 10% of every paycheck. For other women, it can be 1%, whatever you can do. By the way, that's why we have no minimum at Elevest, because we want to make it as accessible as we possibly can, you know, versus the, the I was going to say the old days, but some of the more traditional firms where it's $250,000 completely inaccessible to so many women. A little, actually a little gender biased, frankly, because more men have that amount of money than women do. So it's important to get started. It's important to make it a habit because one thing we hear keeps women back from investing is, oh, you know, what if the market goes down? Okay, that's a little scary, but if the market goes down and you're continuing to invest, you should maybe not welcome those times, but recognize that you're getting in at a lower price during those times. Advisors need to do something differently when it comes to women to get them investing. Um, whether it's talk to them differently, offer them different capabilities, talk about different topics, bring in someone who is more like the woman than maybe he is, whatever those things are. We've got to stop blaming women for not investing. Oh, they're so risk averse. Oh, they need more financial education. Ah, oh, you know, their husbands do it for them. Somehow we as a society have said, that woman needs to change. She needs to go home and do more financial education. Well, you know what? The guys don't have as much financial education as they need either. And we're not telling them to change. And so the question we have to ask ourselves as an industry, the question we've asked ourselves at Elevis is how can we change to serve her, not make her change to, to do it our way?